So why buy disposable batteries when you can buy rechargeable batteries and recharge them hundreds of times? If you're going to buy a rechargeable battery, which brand is the best? Today we'll be testing 10 different brands of nickel metal hydride batteries to find out which one is truly the best. Also, as an addendum to our previous video on AA batteries, I'll be testing four additional brands that viewers requested and we'll see which one of those is the best. So let's get the testing underway. So before we get into testing the rechargeables, in a previous video on AA batteries, I didn't explain why alkaline batteries bounce higher than the new batteries when they're just about used up. Here's a very basic explanation. A new battery just has a layer of zinc atoms. As a battery gets used up, zinc oxide molecules form, which act a lot like a spring. The more an alkaline battery is used up, the more zinc oxide forms and the bouncier it becomes. Now the bounce test only works on alkaline batteries and does not work with heavy duty or rechargeable batteries. To test the batteries, I'm using the PowerX MHC9000 Wizard 1 charger, which can both charge and discharge the batteries. Charging for the first two batteries will be done at 500 milliamps and discharged at 500 milliamps. During the third round, I'll be charging and discharging the batteries at 300 milliamps to see if it has any impact on the milliamp capacity. Finally, I will be charging and discharging the batteries at 1000 milliamps in the fourth round. So this will let us know how each brand performs during slow and fast charging and discharging. During each of the tests, the batteries will be discharged to approximately one volt. So to ensure an accurate and fair test, the charger is going to charge all the batteries. Then it's going to allow each battery to rest for one hour. Then it will discharge the battery, then rest for an hour and recharge it again. This charger will report the discharge capacity at the end of each cycle. The entire process will take about 24 hours for each set of batteries. To keep it interesting, I'm going to mix up the brands going from cheapest to most expensive. So the results are in from the first round, and Rayovac is rated for 1,350 milliamp hours and produced 1,329. Not bad. The Harbor Freight Thunderbolt, rated for 2,200 milliamp hours, produced 2,177. The Black Amazon Basics battery, which is made in China, is rated for 1,900 milliamp hours and produced 1,816. The Amazon Basics Silver, which is made in Japan, is rated for 2,400 milliamp hours and produced 2,000. 346. All of the batteries did rather well, delivering more than 95% of their rated capacity. Some interesting results from the second set of batteries in the first round. The Energizer is rated for 2,000 milliamp hours and produced 1,903. The EBL is rated for 2,800 but only produced 2,478. That's only 88.5% of its rated capacity, not good. The Panasonic Interloop is rated for 2,000 milliamp hours and produced 1,883. I really thought it would do a little bit better than that. The IKEA Lata, which is rated for 2,450 milliamp hours, produced 2,410. Very impressive. So both the IKEA and the Energizer delivered over 95% of their rated capacity. The third set of batteries in the first round, the Duracell, which is rated for 2,450 milliamp hours, delivered 2,435. Very impressive for the copper top. The Power X, which is rated for 2,600, only produced 2,344, which is just over 90% of its rated capacity. This is rather disappointing for such an expensive battery. So we're gonna stay with the 500 milliamp charge and discharge setting for the second round to see if the test results are consistent with the first set of batteries. I'm gonna rotate the batteries around into a different location on the tester to see if it has any impact. Not surprisingly, the results from the second set of batteries are pretty close to the first round. While eight brands of batteries did slightly better, the Energizer and the EBL did slightly worse. Surprisingly, the only brand to exceed its rated capacity was the Harbor Freight brand. However, the Duracell, Railvac, IKEA, both Amazon batteries, and the Energizer all achieved 95% or higher. Unfortunately, the Panasonic Interloop barely missed the 95% mark. The PowerX only achieved 91.4% of rated capacity, and the EBL finished dead last, only achieving 88.2% of its rated capacity. So for the third round, let's slow down the charge and discharge rate from 500 to 300 milliamps to see if this makes any difference. Unfortunately, the order I placed for two additional PowerX batteries did not arrive in time for testing. So slowing down the charge and discharge rate to 300 milliamps helped all the batteries achieve better results. Even though the slower charge and discharge rate helped all the batteries, the EBL still underperformed its milliamp rating by nearly 300 milliamps. So going from left to right, the Harbor Freight, Duracell, Ikea, Rayovac all exceeded their capacity by a little. The Amazon Basics Silver just barely missed reaching 100%. The Energizer, Amazon Basics Black, 
and Panasonic Interloop all achieved 95% or greater. Unfortunately, the EBL only achieved 88% of its rated capacity. So one huge benefit of the rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries is that they are great for high drain devices such as digital cameras with a flash. So this next test is gonna be really interesting. We'll be charging and discharging the batteries at 1000 milliamps. So it's a very interesting results beginning with the Amazon Silver delivering 2,331 milliamp hours, which is a very impressive 97% of its rated capacity. The Rayovac really struggled only delivering 1,105 milliamp hours, which is only 82% of its rated capacity. The Harbor Freight actually didn't do too bad producing 2,085 milliamp hours, which is just under 95% of its rated capacity. The Amazon Basics Black produced 1,725 milliamp hours, which is only 91% percent of its rated capacity. The Energizer produced 1,772 milliamps, which is only 88.6% of its rated capacity, and the IKEA produced 2,374 milliamp hours, which is a very impressive 96.9% .9 of its rated capacity. The Panasonic Interloop produced 1,781 milliamp hours, which is only 89% of its rated capacity. The EBLs continue to disappoint, only producing 2,406 milliamp hours, which is just under 86% of its rated capacity. The final battery in the lineup is the Duracell, which produced a very impressive 2,457 milliamp hours, which is just over 100% of its rated capacity. I love this saying, ingredients matter, and it appears that the weight of the ingredients makes a huge difference. When you consider the weight of the first four batteries, it helps explain their milliamp production. It also helps explain why the EBL and Panasonic Interloop didn't do so well based on their rating. All the way to the right, the Energizer and Rayovac have the least amount of ingredients, and that helps explain their low milliamp hour production. I purchased all the batteries on Amazon. I'm sure I probably paid a little too much for a couple of the brands and that's a factor when figuring out value. In my opinion, it's gonna be really hard to beat the value of the Harbor Freight and the Amazon Basic Silver. However, the value is based upon one charge and discharge cycle. For me, I'm very interested in finding a low self discharge rechargeable battery and that's something I haven't tested yet. Based on the thousand milliamp charge and discharge test, as well as the three previous tests, I'm actually pretty impressed with the Duracell, Amazon, Basic Silver, Ikea, and Harbor Freight. I was really hoping to see great results from the Panasonic Interloop, but unfortunately they just didn't deliver the kind of results I'd expect for a battery that comes with a premium price tag. Finally, I was really disappointed that the EBLs didn't come a little closer to its rated capacity. I didn't expect much from the Rayovac considering its very low milliamp hour rating and price tag. If you haven't already seen the first AA battery test, the following information will make a lot more sense if you watch the video first. So the results are in from testing the extra four batteries and the results are very interesting. In the 100 milliamp discharge test, Kirtland beat the other three brands, producing 2,011 milliamp hours. Considering the bargain price, Sunbeam did great, producing 1,456 milliamp hours. AC Delco came in third place, producing 1,521 milliamp hours. IKEA came in second place, producing 1,656 milliamp hours. In a 300 milliamp discharge test, going from left to right, the Sunbeam once again finished last, producing 1,500 109 milliamp hours. The IKEA once again came in second place, producing 1,611 milliamp hours. Kirtland once again beat the other three brands, producing 1,627 milliamp hours. And the AC Delco came in a respectable third place, producing 1,535 milliamp hours. Based upon the price I paid, Kirtland is by far the best value at nearly 69 milliamp hours per penny. Very impressive. Sunbeam also proved to be a terrific value at 58 cents per milliamp hour. The AC Delco placed third at at nearly 48 cents per milliamp hour. Now the IKEAs are a great battery, but I didn't get a very competitive price on them at 76 cents per battery. So in my testing, they finished middle of the pack in terms of value. So which battery do you think is the best? By the numbers, the Harbor Freight came out on top as far as milliamp hours produced per penny. However, I have a hard time trusting the Harbor Freight brand. I've just had too many bad experiences with their products. However, I really do like the Amazon Basic Silver battery a lot. Now regarding all rechargeable batteries, my biggest concern with them is that they self-discharge over time. So which rechargeable batteries do you think are the best in terms of not self-discharging at a quick rate? I know the Panasonic Interloops claim that they do a very good job with that, but I haven't had a chance to test that. What I do plan to do, since I cataloged the charge date and the charge capacity of all four batteries for each brand, is I'm gonna test them again at three months, six, nine, and a year, and see how much capacity they lost just from sitting on a shelf. I'll keep them in a temperature controlled environment 
and in a safe place well no one will use them just to make sure that we get an accurate test result also i read and reply to just about every comment so if you have a future video idea whether it's batteries or anything else please leave a comment and i'll take notes and try to get to it thanks so much for watching the video please take care and i look forward to next time